welcome to the R video tutorial on numerical integration in R part two. So in this video, we are going to pick up where we left off on the last video. So if you haven't watched it, you might want to jump back and do that. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. Okay, so we're going to pick right up where we left off. We are trying to integrate a function, find the area under the curve, and we're trying to do this via a numerical technique called a Riemann sum or a limiting Riemann sum. And here's the definition. I just wanted to go over it real quick just so we're aware of what we're trying to do. We're going to try to multiply heights f of x star i times delta x i, which is the width. Height times width equals area, and if I chop it up into little pieces and sum it up, I should get the area, or at least approximately. All right, so let's jump over to R. All right, so we've jumped over to R here, and we can get started. We're going to actually program the standard normal density because I want to try to tie ideas together. Yes, it's already exists in R, and yes, we'll look at it, but I just want to show you really quick how to go about doing this and keep reiterating ideas. So SMD1 will be a function, because we're going to use functions in order to do this. Uh, here we go, it's just going to have X in it, because it's standard normal density, and out, I'm going to call it out1 is my output, or actually I should do res1 since I said in the previous video that's actually what I like to do. So this is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2 times pi times exp of negative 0 0.5 times x squared and this should give us the normal density. And then we just need to return this because we're working with a function. And let's see if this works real quick. Run this, seem to not blow up there. Let's try to plot it real quick. So we'll make x1 a sequence that goes from minus three to three, and we'll go by 0 0.01, okay? And then we'll plot x1 and snd1 x1, and we're going to make it type equals L. Make sure everything looks good before we go ahead and try to integrate this thing. So let's run it, and sure enough, it looks like a normal density, because it is the standard normal density. Okay, so what we can do now is we can try to integrate this. So our bounds of integration are going to be the same as what we did before in the last video, we wanted to go from minus one to, well, actually minus two to minus one. Okay, so I'm gonna let A equal minus two, B equals minus one. I'm trying to be explicit here, just so we're aware of what we're doing. And let's see, I have my bounds of integration. The next thing, I have my function height. Next thing I need is develop a partition. Okay, and there's a bunch of ways to do this. Um, I'm going to use the sequence function in order to create a partition because it'll make it really easy for us to do this. So I'm going to develop the partition here. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to make it part one uh, for partition one, and we'll keep changing it and see how it works. So a sequence that's going to go from, uh, let's see here, A to B, and we want it to go by, I'm going to put here length, out equals, and I'm going to say how long I want it to go. So how far I want this thing to actually work. So let's say, well, actually, that's going to be harder. Let's just do by equals 0 0.1. So we're going to have a mesh, and we'll look at it here real quick. If we look at our mesh, we can see, uh-oh, we got to define A to B. Remember, just because you typed it doesn't mean R sees it. Okay, so if I look at part one, our partition, it's just these numbers here. So these two define our intervals. And we're going to use those. We're going to evaluate the function at each one of these and then multiply by the width, which we happen to know, which is 0 0.01. So this becomes pretty easy to do. Uh, all I have to do is just run this across, and I'm going to uh, do this inside of a for loop. And you're going like, Yay, for loop. Anyway, uh, so if you don't like for loops, we're going to keep doing them anyway. We just have to remember how to build the rectangles, and this will work. So uh, for i in 1, and actually I'm going to start at 2 to the length of 
part one. So however long part one is, is how far we're going to go. And then I'm going to call this, uh, let's say, val1, which is going to be our integrated value. And I'm going to do this inside of a for loop. That way we can just add to it. Okay, and this is a, a technique for summing things up relatively quickly. There's a sum function in R, and we could do that, or we could do all kinds of things to make this work. But this is what we're going to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to say val1 is going to be the width or the height. So we have SND1, and we're going to evaluate it at part 1, or somewhere in our partition. And I'm actually just going to evaluate it at the end point, I. So in this case, the first number will be negative 1.9. Okay, I'm going to plug that number in, I'm going to get a height, and then I'm going to multiply it by the width. And we actually know the width. This is actually our delta x, and so we should probably maybe put this up here. Put delta x here, and we'll make it 0 0.1. We'll copy this into our by statement, just so we're all consistent here. And then I can just multiply it by that, because that's how wide the intervals are. So the first one will go from minus 2 to 1.9, negative 1.9, and the width between them is 0.1. So everything's going to work out. The only thing I need to do is keep adding to this. So I'm going to say val1 is equal to our previous one plus our next little bit of area. And that's what makes it a sum. It isn't a sum unless you have an addition sign. So let's give this a go and see how close it actually is, because we can actually compare it against the actual answer. So let's run this. Uh, we're going to get val1 down here. I'm just going to type in here val1. And sure enough, we get this number, 0 0.14541. And if you stare at this number long enough, you'll realize, uh, or these numbers long enough, you'll realize that these are the numbers you could actually calculate off those z tables that you had when you were in your previous statistics class because that's where they come from somebody numerically integrated every single one of those numbers okay so they and they used a computer to do it uh to, to make those tables and before that they did it by hand which is a bit crazy okay so this starts to work so let's try to do this uh if we could and to know the real answer so let's see what the real answer is and we'll see how close we can get at because it's a normal denser, density, we can get the real answer using P norm, and we'll have to do it at two locations. So minus one and for zero one, and we'll see what this number is. And you'll see it's a bigger number. And then we have to subtract off. If you remember when you were playing with those normal tables, you would take one and subtract off the other one. Uh, so because we had overlaying areas. So if I do this, this is the real answer. And the reason I want to keep this in mind is we want to see how close we actually get to this number. And now, right now, we don't have a very fine partition. We've only gone by 0 0.01. But what happens if we go by 0 0.01? And we can run this. And, and, and I'm going to copy and paste this true answer in here, by the way, just so we can keep it around. And we can see it. So I'm going to run this. And notice, now our answer is 0 0.1368461. And the real answer is 0 0.1359. So we're getting pretty close to the real answer using this technique. And so if we wanted to, we could just add another 0 in here and see if we can't get even closer to the real answer. And notice that we're now at 1359991, and this is 13590. So we're getting even closer to the real answer. And if we further push this out, and notice what I'm doing when I'm pushing this out, is I'm making this partition finer and finer. So this the length of this partition is getting very long, and we'll look at what it is here in just a second. So here's this. We're going to run this, see how close we can get. 
And notice that we're now down at 1.359145, which is really close to this. And if I put in another zero, we can get even closer. And after a while, it'll actually start running slow because it takes a while to calculate it. And now we're down to the 13590. So we're correct all the way out of the fifth decimal place doing this. And this is a simple way of uh, integrating inside of R. And yes, there's lots of ways to do this. And I'll show you a really stupidly simple way here in just a second to get about the same answer without using a for loop. But what I'm trying to do is try to get you to see different ways of programming. Okay, so let's just play with this idea that we've done here, and I'm just going to do it the stupidly simple way, and we'll see how it works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do SD, or um, let's see, or what is it? S, standard normal distribution, and I'm going to evaluate it at VAL1, okay? Well, not VAL1, but part one, and we'll see how that works. And I'm going to multiply that by delta x, okay? And what I will notice here is I'm going to get a bunch of numbers, and these are the heights, these are the widths, and they're multiplied by each other. And this almost works if I just take and do a sum on it. And we'll have to pay attention to one little bit before we go. But look, this gets really close as well, and it's not quite the same answer as we had before. Um, the reason is, is we started this one at 2. So I could actually do this and do part 1 from 2 to, well, I could just copy and paste. Right, so copy, paste this, and this should give me the same answer. And notice we've let R do all of the work in one line. And notice we get exactly the same answer that we did before. And so what I did is I actually wrote out here... Uh, the actual Riemann sum, and that's why I like doing this. Uh, you can see the Riemann sum is a sum. And if you go back to the formula of the function evaluated at points in the interval, in this point we did the right end point. You could be crazy and do middle points and all kinds of stuff like that, but that's really not what we're after. We're after the basic idea. And then you multiply it by how wide each interval is. And that's delta x. And sure enough, this thing works. All right, so now that you have some idea how to numerically integrate an R, we can move on to the next video.